today's shear was sponsored by Mrs. Paulina Zimmerman for the quick and safe return of all of our hostages. Amen. And it was sponsored by Mrs. Yalcoin as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paulina. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Always. I have some goodies for you today. <laughs> some goodies. Maybe a little bit a little bit of art at the beginning, and if there's time, a little bit of music at the end. And in between, we'll, we'll, we'll learn to try to understand what the what the painting is about and what the song is about. But you, you probably saw, because this was posted, I think it's something which actually inspired the share that I'm about to give you. And you saw it on the you saw it on the uh, on the fly or whatever it's called. This is from our own Zali Ritholz from, from Shul. And Zali just put this out uh, put this out last week. And it's about Mishnuchnes Adam Arab Simcha. But behind that mask of, of Simcha, we're all in tremendous pain. And this, this is an unbelievable, to me, it's an unbelievable tamsit, like a, sum, a summary that captures everything that we're feeling that we're going through. So I want to talk about this. That's what this year is going to be about, to explain this to explain this painting, and then maybe this time a new song at the end. Shiva Hadasha. Yeah, the more, the more chairs, please come. So we have this chus of living through an Ivyar, a Shana Mubaris, a leap year. The word Mubaris, as you all know, also means like a woman who's expecting, a Mubaris. So it's a year that's filled with expectation and hope. And the Gemara tells us that Mishanechtas Adam Arb Mesemcha, that when other arrives, we increase. The joy. And that has a certain bearing in halacha as well, upon halacha. So there's a question that's discussed among different poskim and mukabalim that when we have a year like this, when there are two months of Adar, so what is the meaning of Marb Besimcha? Is it the same joy in other Aleph and other days? This, in other words, the, some more of the same Simcha? Or is there something different? between other Aleph, is there a difference between other Aleph and other Beis? The first month of Adar and the second month of Adar. So in order to answer this question, we need to talk about Simcha. Since Mishinich Nos Adam, Arb Besimcha. So let's talk about Simcha. Mishinich Nos Adam, Arb Besimcha. The way that we, the way that we grow up and we're used to living, is that Simcha is the result of some type of wonderful external event, or some stimulation from outside that's caused to rejoice. The person himself, herself, is more like a passive spectator. A passive spectator that's like a bystander or a spectator that's waiting for something happy, it's waiting for something good. A simcha, good news, a promotion, whatever it might be. But the person is waiting for something that's going to bring that simcha into his or her life. There are different types of events that take place in the course of our lives, in the course of every day and week and month. Some of them are misameach. Some of them generate joy, marbe, simcha, and there are others that unfortunately cause tsar. But this is the way that we grew up and went through and 
we go through life longing for and hoping for days and events that, that make us happy, that are going to bring happiness. Girls, there are extra chairs in the corner there. Come, come across. Now, with these two months of Adar, with the two months of Adar, the second month of Adar, the second month of Adar that we're going to be entering into soon, is Baruch Hashem. It's filled with, with Purim. It's Purim Dik. And, and we understand that since there are things that are misamayach that happen during the next month, Mimela, the result of it is Ma'am Mesimcha. If somebody's making a bar mitzvah, or a chasana, or whatever it might be, so then you're looking forward to that simcha, and we're looking forward to Purim, and we're looking forward to the month of Adar, and we're Ma'am Mesimcha. So the question is, what exactly is the Ma'am Mesimcha during this month that we're now going through, this first month of Ada, when there's nothing really happy, no particular celebrations going on. There's some people that are making simchas, but on the calendar, there's nothing that's woven into the Jewish calendar in other Rishon. We have Purim Katan tomorrow night. We'll talk about that at the end. But we don't have any external simcha to look forward to on the Jewish calendar to bring a simcha in other island. So here is the Oymek, the depths of this month of other Aleph and the Avaida of the time that we're living in right now, really a lot of what this means. Other Aleph is suggesting to us, is to each and every one of us, that it's possible to have a different perspective, a different way of looking at this Indian of Simcha in our lives. It's possible to have a different way. That maybe Simcha is not just about experiencing something from outside or the result of something wonderful that takes place. Mm-hmm. And being, a, again, being a, more of a passive person who's waiting for Simcha. But rather that there's an objective, a goal, or a mission during this month of Adar Aleph to create Simcha, as opposed to waiting for something wonderful to happen and something exciting on the calendar and something different in our lives, that the month of other Aleph is a time to is a time to create Simcha. What do I mean by that? We're not clowns. So what does it mean to create Simcha? What's creating Simcha? So a person, a person gets up in the morning and you say my da'ani, and it might be that already from the moment you open your eyes, you wash, you say my da'ani, you wash your hands, you're already thinking about all the different things that you have to do during that day. So there, there, you have to see this person, you have to go to this class, you have to go to their work, you have to call this person, you have to text, you have to email, all the different things a person has on that list that starts to buzz around in the head when, when you wake up, when you wake up in, the, in the morning. It could be that, that the Indian of the Avod of Adar Aleph, that the time, this time of, of, that comes every once in a while, every few years, that the Avod of Aleph is that Hashem's Baruch is whispering into the ear of a Jew when he wakes up in the morning, that on that list of things that you have to do today, you also have to be happy. Just put it onto the list. It, have to, it doesn't have to dafka between 8 and 8.15, but dafka between you know 9 and 9.30. But the same way that you feel responsible you feel an achrayis. You feel a chiv. Simcha is a midah. B'samach t'bukhalta. Hashem is baruch. Wants us to be b'simcha. If do us Hashem b'simcha means that it's a, it's a very big part of our avodah Hashem. Avodah means it requires work, concentration, and it's a responsibility. It's an achrayis. And the same way that, that you don't wait for those other things that you have to take care of that day to happen to you. Because if you do, you're just going to lie there in bed and wait. You're not going to. You're not going to make any money. You're not going to be able to take care of the family. You're not going to be able to do anything. You're not going to be able to make a breakfast, a lunch, or a supper. You're not going to be able to do anything. If you're waiting, with all the other things that are on your list, 
with, even with all the technology that we have nowadays, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you ever, have ever felt this, sometimes like it's, like it's late and it's, and you're exhausted and then there's this thing that, I didn't, I didn't brush my teeth yet, you know, it's just like something dumb like that. And, and then, and then you have, I have this thought, that it's, you know, it's 2024, can't like, can't that happen? <laughs> Isn't there some sort of a technology that will just come down from the ceiling and, you know, then I'm thinking about it, it could be very messy and like, you have to do that. <laughs> And, and those things in life that we have to take care of, they don't happen. It doesn't just happen. There, there, there are a million things that we have to make happen. And they're not going to happen if we just lie there passively as, as spectators waiting for something, to be macabre something. It, it doesn't happen. So the same thing when it comes to Simcha. It's true that by the, by the if you have on your calendar... There's a, a, a chasna, or there's a Hanukkah, or there's a, a birthday, or whatever it is, a yontiv coming up. So you have that circle, and you wait in anticipation for that to happen to you. You're going to wait for that simcha to happen. You can't make Hanukkah before Hanukkah. The whole week we're, we're, we're chalishing for Shabbos, but you have to wait for Shabbos. Shabbos, you can't, you can't make it happen. It has to happen to you. But when it comes to, when it comes to this mitzvah of Simcha and maybe the Chiddush of Mishanichnas or the Marvin de Simcha is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is saying that I create I created this month called Other Aleph and I'll explain it now in, more, in a deeper way what this means. Yeah, I created this time of Other Aleph and I'm telling you that Simcha is not just something that is on the calendar, something that you wait to happen to you and to participate in when it happens because of some external event, some some milestone, whatever it might be, and that you just to sit there like a, a chef said, wait, oh, Purim has arrived, so now you get dressed up and you and you have your simcha. But other Aleph is something else. Other Aleph, what Baruch Hu is saying to you is that he, Hashem is saying to each and every one of us that he wants us to have simcha as a tachlis, as something that, that we can do, that we could bring about. I think even Jews who are not religious, and could be that even a lot of people are not Jewish at all, know that there's a famous song that one of the first songs that we ever heard probably uh, you know Jewish songs was Havan the Gila right <laughs> now there's an interesting story behind that song Havan the Gila it was originally a Chassidish Nigan there's some debate between different Chassidists and whose Nigan that is I'm not going to go into that but it was originally a Chassidish Nigan and then there were Chalutzim there were non-religious pioneers who uh, who took that and, and they put some words to it the words, the words don't have anything about Hashem, but there, there are a couple of very, very good words in the Havana Gila, if you think about it. Everybody knows the words, I suppose. I think even I've, even people who aren't Jewish can sing it. But but one of the sentences is, Uru Achim, oh, I'm saying you're right, it's been a long time, but Uru, Uru Achim Liot Sameach. Uru Achim. Wake up, brothers. Uru Achim Liot Sameach. Hava Nagila. What does it mean, Hava Nagila? Let us rejoice. Have an agila. Nismacha. Urachim. Urachim liot samech. Wake up. Get up. Urachim liot samech. So this is, not, this is not allowing Jews to sit and wait for the happiness to arrive. But it's calling out to each and every one of us. Urachim. And they weren't thinking about necessarily in Kedusha, but they were talking about being happy. Urachim liot samech. Now let's try to understand the shores of this. This is the hypothesis of what this month is about. It's a month of urachim liyosamech, when you don't feel like being happy, when you feel like crying and falling apart, and, and you don't know how to do this. There's a month Hashem Zohar gave, especially, and it, it's very, very deep in Yuhay Davke. It has to do with the alignment, the realignment of the sun and the moon, the, the solar calendar, the lunar calendar, and so on. That is a different shear. I've spoken about it over the years. There probably is like a bunch of shear on, on, on the Shonim Mubaris. But what well, we see the teaching from the Kedusha's Levi from the, from the Holy Badish of it. The Kedusha's Levi tells us that the month of Adar corresponds to Yosef at Tzadik. There are different ways that, you know, that each month, the different Shvatim, and so on. And that Adar corresponds to Yosef. And that's why the month of Adar, he says, in Pneumius, is the Ibiyar, is a leap year. 
because the whole mitz, the whole mitzvah of Yosef, the name Yosef means mm-hmm. to add, and the name that he was given by his mother was Yosef Hashem Li, Yosef Hashem Li Ben Acher. That she was davening his name is Osef Lekim Posi, but Yosef Hashem Li Ben Acher, Yosef Hashem Li Ben Acher, that he brought about that Bakasha. By Ben Yomin, of from Rachli of Yosef Hashem Li Ben Acher, that may Hashem add another child to my life, and because of that, the Bedish Shiva says that the that the the two months of Adar correspond to Yosef at Sadik, because Yosef at Sadik is one person, but we count that we count Ephraim and Menashe as uh, as the Two months. In other words, it's Yosef, but we count Ephraim and Menashe, which are 13. Altogether, it means there are 13. Now, we have 12 Shvatim, but Yosef is divided into Ephraim and Menashe, therefore by an Ibiyur, by a leap year. So we have the month of Adar, Adar Aleph and Adar Beis, which is, which is Menashe and uh, the, the oldest, Menashe and Ephraim. So that's why there are 13 months, and that's why that's the time of the, uh, the Kedush Levi says, that's why there the, are the reasons in a halacha for that to, to have it close to pay. So, but that's why the is the the time of the year where where, where we make where we where we do this where where the Sanhedrin would make the leap year is dafke by the by other because it's one month that becomes two. So it's it, it, it built into the month of other is riboy is marbim besimcha. The same reason the mazel is fish, because there are a lot of fish. They multiply. Vid gula rov It's to multiply, to multiply. Vid rov bekeravarutz. So the two months of Adar is the sod of Yosef at Sadik. Why? Why? Why is Davke Yosef at Sadik? So mitzad echad, we see that the pasuk says, "Vayi Hashem es Yosef, vayi ishmat slim." That Hashem was with Yosef when he was in the house of Potiphar. It says that he was an ishmat slim. Yosef Tzadik was, was a successful person. Hashem Ito, Hashem Hoseh, Hashem Hatzliach. Yosef Tzadik was very successful. And therefore, due to his success, and due to his reputation that he, that he got, and his popularity before things went bad, due to that, Yosef Tzadik had reasons to be besimcha. So that really corresponds to, to, to other base. Right, which is the time of Purim. So there, there were reasons in Yosef Atzadik's life that, that, that he was Maslich. I don't know when a person's Ish Maslich, he's doing well. So there's a reason for him to be Besimcha. Hashem Ito, Hashem Hosa, Hashem Maslich. On the other hand, on the other hand, Yosef Atzadik did not wait for the good times to come. Everybody knows that Yosef Atzadik went through terrible, terrible difficulties, went through terrible sorrows. He was torn away from his family. He was sold by his brothers and so on. And all that happened to him. And he didn't wait for Simcha. He worked for Simcha. And we see that in the name that he gave to his oldest son, to Menashe. Kinashani Elokim Eskol Amali Veskol Beis Avi. If we would translate that into modern terminology, it would be that Yosef Atzadik was was thanking Hashem for helping him to overcome the trauma of what, it, of what he had experienced from leaving his father's house, being sent away from his father's house, and all that he had been through as a young man. Ki nashani lukim. Nashani is a lotion that means to forget. So it doesn't mean he forgot his father. Ki nashani, it says, ki nashani lukim, as kol amoli. Amoli means, really means all my hard work and all my suffering and difficulties. Ki nashani lukim is kol amoli. So Yosef Sadik went through very difficult things as a, as a young person, as a teenager, as a young person. And everybody here knows that there are many, many people, some may be here also right now, and to some degree all of us, who get stuck in certain, in certain pain that we experienced when we were younger. Now that's infinitely multiplied when it comes to 
Chalilat, and a little later I'm just dealing with the situation, the crazy situation of the last two days. But there's a person with a, as a child who was, who was, God forbid, was, was, was molested. Or what are these ever going to be going through, the ones who are taken hostage, and Hashem should bring them out, and they should all be free and healthy and strong. And there was a clip of, of this boy that he's playing with his friends, and he was a hostage. And I'm looking at this kid, he looks like he's normal. How could he be normal? So, like many of us, what he'll probably what his mind will do, it'll find a way to to continue on, to try to block out. Maybe at some point, maybe not, but usually at some point you remember. And when you remember, you're stuck. It's very, very hard to be free of that. So Yosef Atzadik experienced terrible trauma. And when he says, Ki nashan l'kim es kol amoli es kol beisavi, he's saying, Ver Shalom, I'm, I'm naming this son Menashe, which means to forget what happened to me. Because I'm asking you, that through this joy, and I'm working so hard to experience joy by building a family, that help me to be free of the past, to be free of the horrors, of the memories, of the pain, of the disappointment that I experienced when I was growing up. Help me to be free of that. And that's the name Menashe. So the name Menashe, the name Menashe is Yosef Tzadik worked hard for his Simcha in life. He worked hard for it. He worked hard. It's true. He had success, which was for a very relatively, it was a very brief time. And then again, he was promoted after he was taken out of jail and he became like a big knocker in Mitzrayim. But the Mitzrayim is that Yosef Atzadik was a person whose entire, whose entire life was about fighting against the memories that were painful and trying to achieve, to create, to generate a type of joy. That corresponds to the first month of Adar. So we have two months of Adar because there are two, there are two phases in the life of Yosef Atzadik. On the one hand, it's like, just like all of us, on the one hand, he had some good times. And there were good things in his life. And he was Nish Masliya. That's more like Purim. Good things happened. There's a lot to be happy about. And and uh, Yosef Tzadik appreciated the simcha of his life. But there were many, many things in, and that's that's other base, that's like Purim. But there are many things in Yosef Tzadik's life that were very, very painful and very difficult. And Yosef Tzadik had to fight very hard to be able to make simcha to something which was a goal and an objective. I'm sure that I hope that most of you, all of you, read Viktor Frankl's uh, first book and second book, but Viktor Frankl's whole, his whole mahalach was that, to, that a person can only, as, a, as somebody who was, in, who was in Auschwitz, the only way he, he, he developed this whole logotherapy, that the way to survive is by being focused on objectives and goals that would give his life meaning. And that would be able to somehow, in concentration camp, to muster up enough hope and 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 the possibility of, of, of joy that would make it possible for him to go on. There was a great tzaddik, I've told this story in Shul a number of times, there was a tzaddik of God Eisner. He was in like five or six concentration camps, and he and then he, he came to it. So it was a Geruch he became the Mashpia in the Chodesh Yeshiva in Tel Aviv. And somebody told over a story that he was in one of the concentration camps together with God Eisner. And he was a young man, and he didn't want to live. He wanted. To, he just wanted to give up. And when, when you wanted to give up in concentration camp, it, was, it would only be a very short time till you would die. So this, he said, as a young man, this person wrote that he 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 couldn't go on. He just couldn't continue. And he just plopped down. Now they had to get up because there was a call, and they had to get up. And he was sitting down, and Rav Eisner went over to him and sat down next to him, and he didn't know him, but he saw that this. He saw that he was, he was giving up this guy. So Gordel Eisner went over to him and said, can I tell you what you're thinking about? I know what you're thinking about. So he looked at Rebbe Gordel and he said, what am I thinking about? He said, you're thinking about how when this is finished, you're thinking about the menu you would like to have at your chasana. Right? He said, what? And he said, and also probably you're thinking, should I have two guys playing in the, in the klezm or the band or maybe it's too expensive for my parents, so maybe I should just have one, one violin is not two. Right? This is what you're thinking about? And he, and he said, I looked at Rav Gordon. 
like he's an absolute lunatic. So that's what I'm not thinking about. He's not only, and you're thinking about, you think about chicken and meat is expensive, but maybe, maybe you'll, you'll try to spend for the meat. And, and, and then Rabbi Goliath walked away. He gave him like a slap on the back and he walked away. And he and somehow he survived. You know the next place they met? They met in Yerushalayim at a chasana, at his chasana. And how Rabbi Goliath found out and went, they both survived and Rabbi Goliath went to the chasana. And he said, Thanks. Do you remember? Ah, Fleischings. My limbs. Do you remember? So, there, there was in the life of Yosef at Sadiq and other Aleph and other Beis. And so it is with us. There's an other Beis when good things happen. And yippee. And then you're happy. And life is good. And you're in a great mood. You're in a great mood. But then there's just a, like a gloomy day in the winter. When you wake up and Hashem is saying, so other Aleph, I want you to put on your list of things to do today. Things that are misameach. Something that's going to be misameach you. Or simcha itself, an internal, a deep internal simcha to think about the brokers that you have in your life. And if it's hard for you to do that, then go out and buy your dress or something. <laughs> <laughs> do something to make yourself happy. Do something to make yourself happy. Rebbe misameach is... Rebbe Nachman said... Rebbe Nachman said, oh, I'm even, even with shlusim, do an as long as it's not against the Torah. But even if it's something which is silly, the ikir is to be mesamech yourself. Simcha is the ikir. Is the ikir is simcha. And maybe we understand that that's menashe is the menashe is the hard work of simcha. Yosef is working to be free of the sadness and the misery and the trauma. That's menashe. That's other aleph when a person has to work hard to be the simcha because there's nothing happening that's particularly happy. And then other bays is Ephraim. Ephraim means Hefrani Elokim. Hashem has made me great. And I had, my life is Givaldi. That's And Hefrani has the word Purim in it, right? Hefrani is the word Purim. Hefrani Elokim Baraj. And that's why it says in the Megillah, Vahayomim Ha'ela Niskarim Vinasim. These days of Purim are Niskarim. They will be remembered and they will be observed. So maybe just by way of a hint. It's possible to say by Yom Ha'elin is Karim Venasim that the first month of Adar, the Avoda is remembering this Karim, thinking. Because that, because there's nothing particularly great that's happening. Again, there should always be good things, but it's just a it's just a, a dreary month without any any holiday anyway. So then the Avoda is in this Karim to try to remember. To try to remember what you have in your life and all the brachas of your life and try to remember to work on, on the Midah of Simcha. And then the second month of Adar is Vinasim. Then you have, then we have Purim. Then there are good things that happen. Now, I mentioned Rabbi Nachman. There's a very, very famous story from Rabbi Nachman that I'm sure many of you know. That there was a, there was a, a poor Jew. I mean, personal had mamish nothing. And, and he found a very, very, very valuable pearl or a gem of some sort. He found this. But where he lived, the, the, the Shtetlach over there, there was nobody that was a maven that was an expert to be able to to be able to estimate how much this this is worth and how rich he was so he decided he was going to travel and to take a boat to some place with a, a big city and over there he'd be able to find mavinim mumchim they would be able to look at this and he'd be able to find out how much is worth and to, and to and to make money so he went on to a boat without any money to pay for the for the trip because he was going to be a rich guy. And he was able to, you read the story, I'm sure you remember the story, he, the, the captain was not a, a lover of Jews, but he was able to convince him that you're going to make a lot of money off of me because I have this valuable thing and it's going to be very, very good for you and so on. And, uh, and he was taken by him and he, and, and he, he, agreed to, he agreed to let him on. And his intention, of course, was to sell this and to make money and to pay for the trip. But, uh, but what happened, uh, of course, to this Yid, unfortunately, is that uh, we're told that one one uh, one day in his cabin, on the o- while the boat was on the ocean, one day in his cabin, he he uh, he was enjoying himself. He had a very good meal that they brought him. They treated him like a, like royalty, and he took out his diamond, his stone. He took this out to admire it and to look at it, and he was he had a little bit to drink and he uh, he had something to eat, so he fell asleep. And whatever happened, the waiters came in, the guys were clean, they didn't see this this stone or something, and they, they were just, they came in, they just closed up the tablecloth, 
and they, they opened the window to the ocean. Okay. And that's how they used to, they, they dumped out all the stuff into the ocean, mm-hmm. including the diamond. So what happened? The guy wakes up, he understood right away, well, and he said the following. This is maybe Nachman's story, he says the following. I mean, it's originally in Yiddish, but the Hebrew translation is, Ach, kishahik, it's when the When the poor guy woke up, the haven calls him, and he understood what happened. Hoylot tsar gol. Hoylot tsar gol. The terrible, terrible tsar anguish. Hoylot tsar gol. U kemat she yotsamidaito. He almost lost his mind. Kimayasa ato. What's he going to do? Hari a captain. I don't have to translate the captain. Who <laughs> gazlan? The, the, the captain is a thug, a thief. She yaragaisa, who's going to kill him? Bad mechir and nesir. Because I can't pay. He's going to kill me. See, he's he's he's, he's sitting there in this in this terrible matzav. So this is the next sentence. This is historic. This next sentence. Al kain osa es atzmo sameach. That's strange. Al kain osa es atzmo sameach. Therefore, he now you could translate this in different ways. You could say he acted as if he was happy. You could say he made himself happy. The simple pshat that they, they say is that he he was mechazik himself to act as if nothing happened. To just go about his business as if nothing happened. Now, we might think that the truth is that he's really faking and it's just make-believe. In other words, that the true story is that this is the poor man. This is the poor man. And But in order for him not to get killed, he was trying to figure out some strategy. So he put on a happy face, right? He just put on a smile and he was faking to make-believe so that the guy wouldn't catch on and he'd somehow get to the shore, maybe a plan to find some other Jew somewhere and to get some money. But when we look at how Rabbi Nassim understood this, now that Sadiqim, the story, and it's quite clear, when you continue on in the story, just reading through the story, it's very clear that he wasn't faking. Maybe that first moment, us as Atma Sameach, was it had to be artificially produced. He had to dig up some mask of Simcha. But when you continue on with the story, you see that he worked on it, and he was Be'emes, Be'emes Mamish in a place of unbelievable Simcha, and unbelievable Bitochen. And as a result of that, Sof Kol Sof, I'm not going to go through the whole story now, but you can, I'm sure you can find it in one second, or we have the Sefer in one second. And the end of the story is that there was a whole mice with the captain, with him. He made, he made even more money than the stone was worth afterwards, and he lived happily ever after. He became, he became a big fear. So that, those words... Us is atzmo sameach. So those are historical words. Just think about that. Us is atzmo sameach. He made himself into a person that was besimcha. In other words, it didn't happen to him because the matzav of his life, the actual condition of his life, and the prospects of his life were horrible. This was Yosef in the bar, right? Yosef Mamish in the pit. So the this poor guy that just had his whole future thrown out the window. So he's Mamish in the pit. And 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 his and his avoider at that time, his avoid at that time was Osa is Atmos Samea. To somehow to try to free himself. To free himself of that horrible that horrible reality that was he was in, of the of the terribly of the of of, it, of what would have normally been just a a a yeush, a complete and total despair. To free himself of of that, also atzmai samer. I mentioned the the hostages before; it's on our minds twenty four hours a day. What's it like sitting there like that? You know, I, I I've read. I've read autobiographies of, of some great people like like the Sharansky and, and others who described to us what it was like when they were going through that time. And I've had conversations with people who were in jail. 
and and what they tried to what they tried to do. I, and I grew up talking to people who were in concentration camp. And I still talk to my mother. Well, Hashem should be able to continue for a long time. Mm-hmm. And people who went through things that are beyond anything we could imagine. And what were what were the what were they thinking? What were the thoughts? That's what Rabbi Lies went over to that Yidin. He said, Ah, chasna, chasna. Right, you're going to get married. Oh, you, what a color you're going to get. What are you thinking about how pretty the color is going to be? What are you thinking about? So you can look at this and say, Okay, listen, I've got a little. You're just talking about being castration. You have no idea what I went through today. I've been through a really hard time today. Like I lost my job today. Right? So every person goes through those days of Yosef in the pit. Every person goes through days like this, Ani, where you feel like something you wanted very, very much and that you thought was going to bring you happiness gets tossed out the window. Osa is atzmo sameach. He didn't wait. Because he, he, if he would have waited, he would have gotten killed. And Rabbi Nachman was telling that to us. If you wait for joy, you're going to die. Don't wait for it. Don't just circle a couple days on your calendar. Or... When will I be happy? If I get married, I'll be happy. If I have a kid, I'll be happy. If I have a panosa, I'll be happy. If I have this, if I have that, because there are always ifs. And when you get that what you wanted, there's always other things that you that you're hoping will make you happy because you find very you find out very quickly that what you thought was going to bring you the biggest happiness in your life is not necessarily bringing you to the happiness that you're hoping for. So then you have to think of something else to make up that will some something will happen to you. It's going to bring you to a place of simcha. Rabbi Nachman is saying, listen, Chavra, you wait around for that, the captain's going to shoot you in the head. <laughs> the Yitzhah, the evil one's going to just kill you. The avoid of a Jew is, and so Rabbi Nachman's whole mitzvah is, oh, says, atzmo b'simcha. Oh, says, atzmo b'simcha. He made himself b'simcha. He made himself b'simcha. And really, that's what Purim Katan is about. That's the first month of Adam. Making yourself the simcha. The only thing that we have about Purim Katan and Shulchan Aruch, it's the last din in the first section of Shulchan Aruch, of Arachai, the last din in the whole first uh, volume, the first section of Shulchan Aruch. But there's a question, is there a mitzvah to eat? It's like any kind of a special meal on Purim Katan. That's the question. So there are different opinions. Is there any Indian like to celebrate Purim Katan? That's an interesting question, right? So what's the conclusion? The Ramah brings down the following words based upon a passage. V'tov lev mishte tamid. A person who has a, a good heart is always celebrating. <laughs> so, in other words, the Shulchan Aruch the Ramah is saying, no, Akasha, yes, me Akasha, is, the, uh, is there a mitzvah to celebrate on Purim Kadim? Okay, you can talk about that. Yes, I'm like this, some say like this, some say like that. And then Ramah just ends Shulchan Aruch and he says, he says, listen, v'tov lev mishte tamid. If you if you have a if your heart if you have a good heart meaning it doesn't mean that you're kind if you have if you are misemech yourself toiv leiv if you're not waiting for purim toiv leiv so the Ramah says mishta tamid every day is cause for celebration not just every day toiv leiv mishta tamid tamid you don't have to take a, 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 a bottle of wine you don't have to have a whole a whole fancy meal. You see that even amongst ourselves, what's going on with the with the eating and the restaurants and the gashmis and the stuff, there's all kinds of crazy things that are going on. And you look in the, any of the, the Jewish magazines, the just crazy things. You know, people are looking for things to be misamech themselves. Looking for things to be misamech themselves. To God. You know, it's, uh, people are ready to take, probably got their Pesach things already right now. But, you know, to look for some new place. That this is going to be the pen. They tell you this is the Pesach of a lifetime. And they say, have you heard of these places? I thought I knew a little bit from the map. <laughs> from when I was in school, I never heard of these places. They found that they, they found a way to bring Jews to some remote island, from the Greek islands, that, 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 that other Mauritian never even went over there. And they found, and they and they find ways for, for Jews to, to make money off of Jews going to these places, because this is going to be the Pesach of your life, the Pesach of your life. It's going to be the most expensive Pesach of your life. <laughs> this Here you're going to have Simcha. There's not in your house. Not in your house. Your house. Not in your house. Not with that menu. You're going to have simcha over there. Mm-hmm. It's the opposite of what Rabbi Nachman is saying. So look at the look at the Torah that you have on the page that you have.
It's in the second chelik of Likud Emiran. You see where it's circled? Chav Gimel? I'm sorry, not all of you have. You could share. Where it says Chav Gimel on the right side on the bottom. It's a tiny little Torah, but it's packed. We're only going to learn a few lines of it. If you have a chance at home to learn the whole Torah, it's not long. You don't have it? Why is it? You're already happy. We didn't even learn it. It makes you happy. <laughs> look, look what Rabbi Nachman says. Vini Nasimcha. Regarding the matter of joy, Alpi Marshal, Shalafamim, Kshebne Odam, Smech Miraknim. He says, Sometimes it happens when the Jews are happy and they're dancing. As I choit fem ish echad mi bachutz. Whenever there's a simcha, even though simcha's Torah, by chasna, there's always somebody that's just like sitting and not, not dancing. <laughs> not because of health or age. I mean, obviously, or you're tired. The person's tired or they're old or not. Well, of course they can't or they shouldn't. But no. Like there's just somebody that's holding out. Right? Always. There's always heaven like that. So what do you do? So Rabbi Nachman says, Grab the guy. means to be kidnapped. You grab the guy. Grab the guy that looks like he's depressed. Grab him. And force him the into the circle of dancing. Force him into the circle. You will force him to be happy with you. And it works. I had to speak someplace out of town a few years ago. And I was and I was saying a whole thing. And 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 also we're talking about simcha and 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 then I told the guy to start playing a nigga and play a nigga. And, and there were like a few hundred people in the, in the crowd. They're like this, like <laughs> clapping <laughs> at me, dancing by myself. <laughs> like this. And I, and I just said, what's going on over here? And I had some rabbis also on the side. And I, and I grabbed the rabbis. No, I didn't grab the rabbis. I left them by the, over there. And I, <laughs> and I went down, because it was on like a stage. And I went down to the oil and I, and I And I grabbed the chavim. I started pushing people and pulling, and then this one pulls that one. Within three minutes, within three minutes, I don't want to say which which place it was out of town because they might be, be insulted. But within three, when the microphone's over, we finish. I'll tell you. But within, but within within three minutes, you had six hundred, seven hundred people on fire march, dancing, dancing. So Ben Achman says, "Can yesh b'nei simcha." Because when a person f- works to be besimcha, tries to force himself to be besimcha, as I am the stalkim and atzad, then you can drive away the sadness and the depression. Of a mile you say, "Let's amach lirdo if achem mar shchayr dafka." He says, "There's a there's even a bigger madrega." So you besimcha, and when you besimcha, you forget about all the things. Nashani lokim, you forget about all the sad stuff. But there's a bigger madrag. The bigger madrag is what? Lir doif acha marish charedaf. Les amets lir doif acha marish charedaf. To go and to grab that part of you that's depressed and sad and force it into the dance. Bring it into the dance of your life. Bring it into the simcha. Lahachnis oisa gam kain besarcha simcha. To put into that perspective. Of bringing it somehow into the simcha as well. Then you see that the one that was said is now dancing and happy. Even that part of you that's that's in pain, that, that has difficulties, can join into the dance, Nachim says. Which is the need of, of Adar, which is a month, two months. Of being able to turn things around. So to take that which is depressing and sad, to turn it around. Because when you if you work on this, on this meter of simcha, and it's on your list of, of, of things to do, and and you work on it, then it's possible. You're able to Somehow turn around all of the daigas, all of the worries, all of the aggravation, all of the sadness to somehow 
to transform it into joy and to bring down a chef of joy and that all the things that, that, that you're going through could, could even miraculously turn around like Purim. But, but it happened by Purim. Shechoyte for Marashchayra, Reb the Marashchayra, Marashchayra means the depression, or Machnes Oyesa Balkarach Lotarach HaSimcha, and forced it into the, into the Simcha, into the dance. Come on, Shalom. So, Bechinus, that's the Pesach in Yeshaya, Sosna Besimcha Yasigu, you have to run after Yasigu, when you want to catch up with something. Sosna Besimcha Yasigu, Venos Yogan, Venos Yogan Vanocha, and all Yogan Vanocha will be, will, will disappear, will be taken away. Now, I just want to end this, because we're finishing up these weeks of Shavuot now. Tetzavah in a leap year is the last week of Shavuot. So, we're reading these parashiyas now, of building the Mishkan, which, as you all know, and there are many, many tires that are written on this, that uh, each, each family is try, tries to build in their own home. It should be a, a Mishkan, each community, and so on. But imagine the following. We all zaycha Baruch Hashem to go to Simchas, to go to Chasimus. And, and after the Chasna, like two or three weeks, two or three weeks later, you, you have the pleasure of seeing the Chasna and Kala walking together, and they're, you know, giggling, and they're having this nice walk together. And a person can stop and to think for a second, to try to imagine... What's this couple going to look like five years from now when they're walking down the street? And what's this couple going to look like five years from now? Well, forget about when they're walking down the street. It's the end of a day. It's the end of the day, and this one was working, I was working, and, and they're just sitting around the table and whatever, drinking a cup of coffee or tea or soda, whatever it is that they like, and they're sitting around the table. What's the measure of joy? in that experience of quietly sitting with the other. It's not other bays. It's not Purim. It's not Chasna. It's not Shever It's not the newlywed. It's not the newlyweds uh, on their honeymoon. It's just a day in the winter. And the end of it could be the end of a difficult day in the winter. The work didn't go well. Or the kids were the kids. The kids were giving a hard time. Whatever it is, it's not a particularly great day. So the test of a relationship, the test of a hava, of love, the test of a relationship, is is not the big event. It's not what they're advertising in the magazines. It's not the big event. That's not the test of what your marriage is like, of what your life is like, the big event. That's not the test. In other words, Purim is not the test. Purim, like the expression goes, Purim is only one day of the year. The Jews had an expression like that because they were able to drink on Purim. They were able to, in the old days, and they had terrible sorrows, and they were able to forget all their problems because they would drink on the day of Purim. But there was always an expression that Jews had because Jews are very realistic also. And they would say, you know, Purim is an iron tag, you know, iron tag. Purim is only one day. We're going to wake up from this and it's going to be back to the, <laughs> the Cossacks and the pogroms. You know, that's, perm is one day. The test of, the test of, of your life is not, is not Purim. Purim is Gewalt. But that's not the test of, of a person's life. It's, the, it's a simple day. And nothing exceptional at all is happening on the outside. And you're not, you don't need it. You don't need there to be some great external stimulation of some big event or some exciting show or something fantastic to happen in order for, in order for you to be able to be in that place with that person. The question of a relationship is whether or not the two of you can generate and create and be marbim besimcha in an active and proactive way, to be marbim besimcha. Or and is. And the same way that in every couple, with every couple, there are times that they hurt each other. In the course of the years being together, you hurt each other. There are things that were said that shouldn't have been said, things that happened that shouldn't have happened. And there's there's some pain and there's some hurt. And the avoid of Idus Hashem Simcha in a relationship is to try to forgive and to forget. To try. To overcome that. To try to, to bring even those difficulties into the dance 
somehow, and that there should be two months of Adar in your relationship, not just Purim, and waiting for those days of, of Purim. And it's really the same thing that the Jew has with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Everybody's talking now during the war, of course, everybody's bitochen, bitochen, to trust in Hashem, to trust in Hashem, and so on. But to feel, to be able to feel, with all the pain that we're experiencing, to be able to still feel joy. I had many, many chevra were asking me, uh, before the midwinter break, many were asking me, is it, is it okay to take the kids? You know, there's so much going on now. Is it, maybe it's not right to take the kids to, to, on a vacation. To, you know, there's so much... How can, how can we have a, go on a vacation with this? Some, you know, others are the, the chevra are, are, are in Gaza, and, 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 and my kids are in Orlando. It, it's uh, really a fair. And there is something to be said for that in halacha as well. Of course, when there's a tsar, or the rabbin, or the tsarist rabbin, when, when, when Am Yisrael or communities are going through difficulties, we have to empathize in, in, on every level. We have to empathize and to feel that, and to, to change, to make adjustments in our lives, and so on. My answer to that question was that the children don't understand any of this, and please don't make them miserable. They're mm-hmm. looking forward to it the whole year. And you could tone down things a little bit, you know, but, but uh, to make sure that the children are the simple. But it's not only that. It's much deeper than that. And this is really so much from the Basham HaKadosh, what he tried so hard to bring to the world. It goes back to David and Malach. David said, Vani kirves alukim litai. When things are not going particularly well and there's some scary stuff going on in the world, when you're with somebody that you love, and you're just sitting around at the end of a hard day and you have a cup of coffee with a Kosh Baruch, who now said, I enjoy that. Vani kirves alukim litai. It's like Taiv Lev Mishnah Tamid. The Sadiqim were very, very realistic. Taiv Lev Mishnah Tamid, they knew about it, and they lived through pogroms. And they, and they lived through plenty of tsars, just like Yosef and Sadiq. Kamo Yosef, what's the song on Yosef Mizem Mizmor? You know from the Hanan Ben Ari, what's the Yomani Cholim Kamo Yosef, Gamotiza Kulobor. I also had dreams like Yosef, and they also threw me into the pit, mm. just like Yosef. Kamo David and Yosef is more. But like David, I made my service into a song, into a dance. It's unbelievable. If you can't enjoy having a cup of coffee with Hashem at the end of a hard day, it means that you're missing Kiris Alukim. It means that you're just waiting for other days. You only like God when He's, when he's uh, giving you a happy time. He's giving you a good time. Then, ah, oh, it's good. It's Purim. Everybody likes God on Purim. That's the most. That's his most popular. That's the. That's when he's most popular on Purim. Tisha B'Av. <laughs> it's not high on the list. Tisha B'Av. But Purim. Everybody loves the version of Purim. It's good. That Purim. But when it's a difficult time, then the question is: Is there really? Is there? Is there? Is there, is there depth to this relationship? Is this relate? Does this relationship transcend? the circumstances and conditions that we're living through. If it doesn't, then it's sort of pathetic and sad. We're just waiting to have something to make each other happy or to forget something, to make you forget your sorrows. But if but if your relationship with Kaj Baruhu and with each other, if that's a relationship of Ani Kirvas Alukim, Litov, Litov. And I was just being with you. Just being a Jew. Rav Nassim wrote about this many times in, in, in his tefillahs, and the tzaddikim spoke a little bit. The simchas yahadusa. When nothing else is going well, you can oh, just think about the, the simcha of being a Jew. And that's why, as I'll tell us, that that, that description of Elam Haba, Elam Haba ain't below achila v'loshesia. In the world beyond this world, there's no eating or drinking. The Sadiqim are sitting with the crowns, whatever that means, on their heads. And they're delighting in the presence of the Shechina. So the Sadiqim say that for, for some people that's going to be Gan Eden, for other people that's going to be Gehen. You can only think of somebody saying, oh, is this, this is boring. The party is over. There's no perm. There's no eating, there's no drinking. Yoishvim, Patra Sambra Shayim, Vinanim, Miziva Shrina. Just enjoying a quiet cup of coffee with a Kajibara. Vinanim Miziva Shrina. 
So for one person, what could be better than that? That's Mamish Oilam Haba. Just like for that for that husband and wife, it's an Oilam Haba, just they don't have to be in the French Riviera. It's an Oilam Haba to, to be able to just to, to be together wherever they are in the world. It's an Oilam Haba. It's the best thing in the world. For another couple, you can give them you can give them Pesach on the moon. It's coming up in a year or two. You give them Pesach on the moon. Nobody had a Pesach like this. The, the, your match is going to float into your mouth. And they're still going to be tzibrochen. They're still going to fight and be broken. Because why? Because they heard that somebody went to Jupiter. Right? I ended up on uh, My husband only brought me to the moon. What kind of husband do I have? So, my husband goes to the moon. If it's not, if it's not, if it's missing the vanik kibbutz of the kimli toiv, it doesn't make a difference where you are. And when you have that magic of kibbutz, kibbutz of the kimli toiv, even if chalili you're in concentration camp, it's terrible. It's, it's, in the, it's the deepest pit, worse than yosef at sadi, but it's the most horrible thing. But you get up, and you continue. If you have him, let your rocky atim adi. And that's your, and that's that's and that's your Elam Haba. So instead of telling you a story, I'll I'll I'll, I'll teach you a song. <laughs> It'll take a minute. So actually, uh, oh, as you all, so you can actually look at the words. One of the fellows picked up the words. Let me tell you the history. Thanks, Dan. Let me tell you the history of this. No, I'll put it on. I'll tell you what this is about. It was. Um, It was an album that we were zeichet to be involved with putting out from the Nagunim, a very, very remarkable person, by the name of Michael Shapiro, Michael Shapiro, and the Shul, with Shomo Katz and my son Ushi, we really were spearheading the, uh, and as real Gans, we were really the ones who were making it happen. And we put out uh, an album like like four or five years ago, it was before COVID, I don't know, but I think it was four, four or five years ago we put out the album, you might remember, some of you might know only you. A song also about Havas mm-hmm. Olam Avdich and Everlasting Love. The songs, it was a, so there are many, many songs from this Michal Shapiro. But what we wanted more than anything, so now there's going to be four songs coming out in the over the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. Four new songs. Now, well, new songs that are 40 years old, 45 <laughs> years old. But now what we wanted more than anything was to have Michal Shapiro himself. He, re, he sang on the original, but he does not want to do it anymore. He's already older and he, he doesn't want to do it. He's, he's very excited about the project. Shlomo Katz is, is, is really uh, take charge. Last, last time you remember, we had Yosef Kaduna and Shlomo Eight and a lot of the Chevra and Chaim um, and others, which we're also having on this album. And there were some other, some that were not on the last album. And um, and this this is actually Michal Shapiro himself singing. So the song that was originally that he sang originally around forty five years ago, and this is actually from the tape that was that was missing. He didn't sell them in the stores. He had to get them, the whole ways of getting them, the tapes. His songs are the most magnificent in the world. You have to listen to it a few times. So this song, called Holy Man, they actually were able to use the, the with the computer to redo Michal Shapiro's original, with the music, that it should be more up-to-date music, mm-hmm. but with Michal Shapiro's original song. Mm-hmm. So there's supposed to be a microphone here, but there was no, there's no microphone, so I hope you'll be able to hear it. I'm going to play it, and then... We said it's going to be coming out, but I can send it to any of you. So this is just the thing that I wanted to do, so I hope it's okay. You <laughs> you me for two minutes, okay? For sure. Am I in trouble? <laughs> I didn't ask before. <laughs> but follow the words if you can. One or two are wrong on the page. Fire and light would dance 
The first half in the world to hear that. It should be Zeichem Mitzvah Shem. That Shem should cure the pain in the, in the heart of the world. Amen. 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 Amen.